Hey, Sean here from 3M. Thank you so much for joining me today with this video. Uh, today, the topic is the dynamic mixing system, and we're gonna take a little deeper dive into it and talk about the settings, which are very important, uh, the maintenance and the cleaning of both the, the equipment and the cartridges. So let's get started. Okay guys, before we get started, let's just talk about a couple things. Hey, let's make sure we're always wearing the proper personal protective equipment. Um, for this video here, I'm gonna wear a respirator when it's necessary. I'm gonna wear gloves and I've got eye protection on as well. So always err on the side of caution and use the correct equipment. You'll have a long and healthy career. You'll be happier for it uh, as you, uh, you progress in the industry. Also, keep in mind that these videos are designed for a professional setting, such as a body shop. Um, if you have any questions about both the safety or our warranty information, um, we'll have a link in the description below. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this system and this applicator. So you'll notice immediately once you pull this out of the box, it's pretty much ready to go. Um, if you've got an older version of this, you would notice some improvements we made as well uh, to the old version, like a longer trigger. But the, the main thing we improved on this is we put a, a set regulator on this. So you don't have to worry about monkeying with the regulator. It's set to a given um, uh, PSI that you don't have to worry about it. And in the past, what we saw, the reason we did that is guys were running way too much inlet pressure into this gun. Um, so that can cause problems with the gun and the seals, but mainly what it was doing is it was forcing the material out so fast that the mixer couldn't actually mix it and then it wouldn't properly cure. So that regulator is on there for a reason. Make sure you get it on there. Uh, that'll solve almost any problems you're gonna have with that. So big addition to this gun for that reason. Now, uh, the settings, what you're gonna notice is that uh, the, the, depending on the product that you're using and the viscosity of that product, it'll have a different setting, but it's pretty simple. Um, really, the only time you need to change the settings, all of these that we see up here um, are set for two and a half turns out. So if you look at the back of the gun, uh, see that in the overhead camera here. If you turn it closed, which is counterclockwise all the way, and you see a little dot on the top, and you can actually move that dot, position that to the very top. Now I'm gonna go two and a half turns and I'm ready to go for everything you see here. The only time you really need to change that is when you're using a glaze, which is a little thinner, you're only gonna go one and a half turn. So for glaze, one full turn and a half, and you're ready to go, okay? So the settings are pretty simple, pretty easy to remember. So I'm gonna go um, another full turn. So I, um, I'm gonna use these products here, the uh, seam sealers and adhesives first. So. Uh, really important that we follow those settings. Um, the other thing is loading the cartridge into the gun. So you're gonna notice that there's a, uh, a little rod here that it's kind of like a, a ratchet. So we wanna insert that in and this lined up just right and then you just give this a, whoops, uh, just give this a quick turn. Now you can see I, it didn't quite line up. That's what I wanted to address. So like I say, it's like a ratchet where you gotta just give it a little bit of a turn. So I'm gonna need some air. And I'm gonna just give it a little trigger. And now it should line up. And if it doesn't, a little more trigger and it goes on, okay? So make sure that's aligned properly. There's only one way that it's gonna go on. So you can't really, if it goes in there it's, and loads, it's correct, okay? So. Uh, once you've got that loaded in, we're ready to go. But let me just talk about a couple things here. Uh, with the fillers and glazes, you'll notice that you have a red cap on here, which requires a red nozzle. And you'll see the red nozzle has one large port for the material, the filler, and one small port for the hardener. So you can't really mix those up. Um, if you did, it would leak out of the back. Now with the adhesives and seam sealers, um, it's a purple cap, which means we're gonna use a purple nozzle. And you can see that the difference is the ports are equal size. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So 
really can't get that mixed up at all. So as long as you get that on there properly, you're ready to go. Of course, we always want to equalize these before we attach these nozzles, so I'll demonstrate that as well. In order to equalize, obviously, we have to load this into the applicator. Give it a little pop, goes right on, okay? So um, now what I'm gonna do, I've got the cap off. I'm just gonna extrude some of the product out. Now, um, this hat is set, I'm, I'm gonna just double check, make sure I'm at two and a half turns. One, two and a half. Now I'm just gonna just kind of pop this and just push a little material out and just make sure it's coming out of both sides, okay? Now, this is a 50 to one mixing ratio. So you're gonna see a very small amount of hardener in there, but that's okay. Um, once we've got that equalized, now I'm going to make sure I've got this aligned properly and attach it. And now um, you can see the nozzle spins in there. And as I pull the trigger, I can extrude it out and it's gonna automatically inject the hardener and mix them together. So now you can see an obvious difference between the more yellow without the hardener and the bluish color that's got the hardener in it. Now you'll notice that the first time you use a cartridge, typically you'll get a lot more blue in the beginning and that's by design. That's to show you that the hardener is coming out. And then as you uh, continue to extrude, usually you're doing a little test anyways, uh, you'll notice that it'll even out to a, a not such a dark blue color but again, you can see the difference with the hardener and without the hardener, so it's pretty obvious. So that's how the fillers are. Now, as long as I'm looking at this, one of the things I wanna point out, which is kinda cool, is that you see this little rod comes out and there's a gradient on this cartridge. And that gradient, for the overhead camera, I think you can see it, uh, will tell you the percentage of the material that you've used. So. Uh, this is one way that you can invoice and bill for these materials and get properly compensated uh, for the materials that you use. So you can document how much material you use. So that's kind of a cool feature as well. So as far as the uh, adhesives and sealers go, and again, adhesives, anytime we're using adhesives, make sure you're using the correct adhesive, consult that OEM information, make sure you're using the right adhesive for the right vehicle, and actually for the right panel for that vehicle. So always do that. It's a safety issue. Make sure you're using the correct adhesive. Now this will load similar to the filler cartridges. Put it on, half turn. Again, we're gonna equalize. Just make sure material's coming out of both sides. Sometimes you get a little dripping out of there. You might wanna just clean up. And as long as I'm talking about this, um, I also want to mention that, you know, occasionally you do get some adhesive on this um, mixing rod, especially when we're done um, with a nozzle. You might see a little material on there. Make sure you clean that off because that can actually bond the, the uh, uh, mixing rod to the cartridge and it won't spin. So make sure uh, that's kind of the maintenance end of this, that we want to always clean that off before we uh, put the cartridge away. So now I've got that cleaned off. I'm gonna put my mix nozzle on and I'm ready to go here with this material. One thing I wanna mention as well is a nice feature here is this mixing nozzle extension. So this is only used for the adhesives and seam sealers. Um, no reason to use it for a body filler but it's just a friction fit. Just push it on tight, it won't come off. And now I can cut down that bead size to where I really need it typically. That's a lot of material on a, a bonding flange, whereas this will actually put the right amount of material out. You can see that's maybe just a little bit slow. So I can actually adjust this out a little bit or, or turn that pressure up a little bit. You don't want to go crazy with it, but just another half turn will speed it up a little bit. Looks good, okay? So very easy to do. You always want to push this back, and then we can turn this and pull it off. So as far as, uh, you know, loading the cartridge, extruding the material, it's a very easy system to use. 
Okay, so finally, let's talk about storage when we're uh, finished with the application. So, um, pretty similar to any other products with a mixing nozzle, we can just leave that mixing nozzle in place and the product will harden up and seal that where no air uh, is gonna get in there and it's not gonna flow back and cause any kind of curing, okay? So really just leaving that nozzle on. However, um, again, sometimes you may see some adhesive gets on this bottom by that mixer. Um, in that case, you can take that off and wipe it off or use an acid brush to clean it off. And then you could just put the uh, purple plug back in there. So unless you see an excessive amount of adhesive on there, and again, for the overhead camera, you can see right in here, and there's very little on there, but um, nothing to really worry about in this case. But if you do see a big glob on there, you're gonna wanna clean that off. So um, nothing, again, very unusual. You can leave that on. You can just continue to use this cartridge until it's empty. And these do a really nice job of using all that material up. But again, just go back and make sure you equalize properly before you uh, break out that cartridge that's been used and use it again. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, inspecting those ports for any hardened material is probably the most important thing. So with that, um, pretty much wraps up the, the cleaning and maintenance of this product as well. Thanks so much for joining me today for this video. I hope you picked up a couple of things maybe that you didn't know. Um, hey, feel free to like the video if you liked it. You can also leave comments down below or questions. So we try to address those questions periodically. So go ahead and leave uh, any questions that you may have. Also hit that subscribe button and then ding that little bell and you will get notifications without having to go and search for these videos. They'll come right to you. Also uh, check out our Collision Repair Academy for additional content. We have more videos and more content of all types there. Um, we will leave a link in the description below. With that, thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time.